Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends. Today is day five of the official Magic Origin spoilers, and we have ten new cards to take a look at. And we're seeing some powerful cards this time around, so let's jump in and see what we got. The first one is Knight of the Wild Orchid. Those of you who played Shards of Alora will be familiar with this card. It is a reprint, but this is a very powerful card. can be very powerful and limited, but this has definitely standard implications as well in the right decks. And I'm seeing so many synergies in white, white and green, but even just white solely, that I feel like there may be some pieces here to start thinking about a white weenie standard deck, whether that's completely white or white green. And I've start, I'm starting to feel like that's going to be a reality. And this is another card that's going to enable that. You pay two white mana, you get a 2-2 with first strike, so it's kind of like your basic knight card. But then on top of that, if your opponent controls more land than you, and especially if you're on the draw, that's probably going to be the case you get to search your library for a planes and put it directly into play not even tapped so that is phenomenal this card is awesome for just kind of ramping into bigger things and it's a nice body of 2 2 for striker is fantastic the only downside to this card it is too white so if you're planning on playing this on turn two which is really where you want to play it you're going to need a mostly white deck to do that, which is fine in constructed formats. But if you're thinking about limited, you do have to think about the implications of, do I still put this in my deck? Now in limited, even if you play this thing on turn three or turn four, even if you don't get the land bonus out of it, it's still a 2-2 for a striker. That is not a bad card. So know your deck. It's not going to fit necessarily in every single limited deck. If you're splashing white, it's obviously not a good idea. But if you're playing half white or mostly white, this is going to be awesome and limited just as much as it's going to be a good constructed card. Next is Rhine Wingmare. And this costs 3 for a 2-1. Basically feels like Thalia, which is kind of interesting. Now it costs 1 more than Thalia. It has flying instead of first strike, but it's got the same stats. And just like Thalia, non-creature spells will cost 1 more to cast. So here's what's interesting about it. I mean, a 2-1 flyer in limited is a very good card normally. However... For the most part, your limited decks are going to consist mostly of creatures, so you want to be careful not to hose yourself by playing a card like this. Now, if you have a lot of ramp or something, maybe it will be just fine. You can hopefully ramp up. Your opponent isn't ramping, and they get hurt more than you get hurt by this, and you get a 2-1 flyer. So it could work in some limited decks, but you do want to be careful that you're not hosing yourself with it. As far as things like Modern go, well, no one's going to play this over Thalia, so it's not really going to make it there. I mean, maybe this is the fixed Thalia, if you will. As far as Standard goes, I don't know if there's going to be a combo deck that's going to be solely based around that many non-creature spells that it's going to be a good Standard card. Maybe this fits into Commander in a deck that wants to play two Thalias, and this could be kind of the second Thalia, something like that. So, interesting design. I don't think it's going to see a whole lot of play, though. Next is Soul Blade to Jin, and this guy's a limited bomb. He costs five, but he's a 4-3 flyer. He's got that evasion, and on top of that, he just gives all your creatures, including himself, prowess, basically. So if you're playing that prowess deck and you got yourself some support bounce cards or something like that, this guy's going to be phenomenal. This is the closest thing to basically a storm enabler that you're going to see like in standard. <laughs> now, having said that, I don't really think the pieces are there to have some sort of creature slash storm deck. Uh, but you never know what the future holds as more sets come out. Uh, but this is going to be an awesome card in limited. And you never know, there could be a control deck in standard that might want something like this. Five casting cost is a little bit high when you can play other things that are up in that zone like Solomagar and stuff like that but uh, it, you never know it could get there in, in a deck or two next is demonic pack and i'll say this right off the bat this is a mythic rare it's a really interesting design to me it almost feels like the fixed doomsday but having said that i don't know who this card's for and i'm not really sure why you would play it other than just for fun <laughs> it costs two black two colorless it's an enchantment so you're going to cast this card you're going to have to wait a whole turn before you get any effect now at the beginning of your upkeep you get to choose one of the four things but you can only do each one time first one is it deals four damage to target creature or player and you gain four life Second thing is, target opponent discards two cards. Third, draw two cards. And the last thing is, you lose the game. So basically, you play this and you have five turns, well, four turns, to survive and win the game. Now, if your opponent's at four, 
doing four points of direct damage for four is pretty good as long as you don't think they have a way to gain life at instant speed or something like that so maybe that's what this is for but it doesn't really fit into a burn deck because it's too black you can't even really splash it easily into your normal burn decks now if you're hoping that like the discard and the card draw is going to get you there well you know you're relying on luck quite a bit at that point and as far as the discard goes i think something that's this risky i feel like should have been a him to turok type effect and maybe made your opponent discard two cards at random not of their choice so that to me seems sort of weak to just kind of mind rot them uh as far as drawing two cards goes that's great but it doesn't mean it's going to get you there really weird card like i don't really see it anywhere <laughs> it's just too risky and too expensive and too slow for the effects to start taking taking effect so anyway having said that i think it's a really cool design i'm interested in just interested to see cards like this in the future or who knows maybe even another card in magic origins that's similar uh but i don't think this one quite got there next is narrow root trapper and we're starting to see now the pieces of this black and green Golgari elf deck which is pretty interesting and much like the selesnia white weenie decks that we're seeing there's some potential for this to be powerful and have some powerful pieces show up maybe even in standard so this particular card we were talking earlier when we looked at spoilers about where's our one mana drop mana dork well here he is he's just in black instead of green and he's one black for a one one and you can tap him and pay a life to get a green mana but you can only use this for an elf spell so it does kind of have to be in a pretty elf centric deck for it to be really good for you now, on top of that, it can tap to give target attacking elf you control a death touch until end of turn, which is a thing that's actually very good, kind of doubles as a removal effect in some cases. So this is a pretty good card. Like, this is going to be great and limited as long as you're playing a good amount of elves. If you've drafted a lot of elves, this guy's going to be awesome ramp for you, and it can be a very powerful card. It's at the uncommon slot notice and not the common slot. This would just be too good at common, I think, for the limited environment. When it comes to standard, there has to be an elf deck out there. And the pieces are starting to fall in place. And maybe with some future sets, there could be an elf deck out there. Then I think about things like modern. We've already seen successful elf decks. A card like this maybe could supplement that. It'd be interesting to see. Uh, however, even if this card doesn't supplement that, I think we're going to see some other cards as we go forward that will supplement the modern elf deck. Next is Goblin Piledriver. So yeah, they reprinted Goblin Piledriver. Uh, those of you who are familiar with this card, it's seen vintage play, it sees legacy play. This card is just a powerhouse in the old Eternal formats. It only costs two, it's a one two goblin, has protection from blue, and when it attacks it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn for each other attacking goblin. Now, <laughs> this card is bonkers if you've ever played with it in very old fashioned styled goblin decks now the reason it's so powerful in some of those internal formats is blue is a very dominant color when you're playing legacy blue has a lot of bounce blue's got just about everything that you can imagine <laughs> blue can do it to you or to your creatures so this is a little stronger in a world where blue kind of dominates and most decks are at the very least splashing blue to get its benefits Maybe it's not going to be quite as crazy in an environment that's balanced and blue's not as strong. However, this is still an awesome card to just load up with goblins and then go in for into attack. And nothing blue can touch it, so you don't have to worry about bounce or even a blue creature blocking it. It's going to get by blue without a problem. But even if you're not up against blue, this is still a really awesome card. And anyone who's played with it knows what it can do and how good it is. So there's a little thing called Goblin Rebel Master that's still going to be in standard for at least a little while until it rotates out. This is going to complement Goblin Rebel Master. I really think standard is going to see, I mean, testing is going to start probably as early as today now that this card's been spoiled. I think standard, at least at the very beginning, is going to see a lot of these Goblin decks, at least for the next couple of months. Uh, so if you don't have your Rabble Masters, <laughs> buy them today, because once this word gets out that this card's being uh, reprinted, it, it, I think it's going to be a big deal in standard. It's going to be very interesting to see. 
Next is Dwayne's Elite. And this is just another kind of support card, a very good limited card, I think, for your elf decks. But even if you're not playing an elf deck, it costs two. It's a 2-2, two -two, so it's a bear with upside. And if you already have an elf in play, you get another 1-1 one -one elf. So as long as you have an elf, you get 3-3 three -three power toughness on the board for two. It's pretty good. In limited, it's still a grizzly bear, even if you're not playing with a lot of other elves. That might be good enough. Uh, but if you're playing with a lot of elves... Yeah, it's going to be great for you in Limited. And a card like this could be another support card. If there happens to be a standard elf deck, if that is a thing, this card could be part of it. Sylvan Messenger. Now, this is also a reprint, but this is the type of card that makes me feel like a standard elf deck could be possible. Along with cards like Collective Company, for example, I'm starting to think the pieces are starting to fall in place for a deck like that. So anyway, she costs four. She's a 2-2 trampler. She's an elf, of course. But most importantly, when she enters the battlefield, you get to reveal the top four cards of your library and put all elves to reveal this way into your hand, the rest of the bottom of your library, in any order. Pure card advantage. Now, granted, paying four for a 2-2 trampler isn't very exciting, but that effect is probably worth the four mana on its own. You could potentially be drawing four cards off of this, that's awesome. So in limited, this is going to be a fine card as long as you're playing a good amount of elves. So if you're drafting some elves and you get your hands on this card and it is uncommon, so she'll be floating around, she's going to be good for you. She's going to do some work. But I think she can really shine in a constructed format, like possibly standard. So it's going to be very interesting to see if some of these tribal, maybe goblin, elf, or white weenie decks start to take over standard if it's pushed that much. Next is a card we looked at a little bit yesterday, but we had a very blurry version of it, and we couldn't see all the stats. Now that we see all the stats, this card's pretty pushed. It only costs three, granted, Golgari colors, for a 3-2, and when this enters the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to the number of elves of you control. So this is basically your finisher for the elf deck. Your elf deck wants to start off with a lot of small creatures, just get in there, get in there, get in there. Hopefully get your opponent down low enough that all of a sudden a card like this can go ahead and end the stalemate. This is a fantastic card. It's got great stats for its casting cost, and the ability to just do some direct damage basically out of nowhere is pretty awesome. Again, if there is a possibility of this working in standard, this is going to be another piece of that deck really cool. This could also potentially find its way into the modern elf deck. So I really like this one a lot. Now for our last card of the day, and this was spoiled from a Japanese language card, but it's Helm of the Gods, and it's a pretty powerful artifact under the right circumstances. It costs one, and only costs one to equip, and equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control. Theros hasn't rotated out yet, so you have some time to play this with those Theros cards, and this is going to be very powerful in those situations. As far as limited goes, there's a bunch of enchantments in Magic Origins, but they do cost a little bit of mana. They force you to take a turn off. You're probably not really going to play that strategy along with a card like this, especially considering this is a rare. You're only going to have one of it at best in your deck. And also a lot of those other enchantments are also at the rare or even mythic rare level. So I don't see this doing a lot of work in limited. But I think where this card will shine will be Commander. You can play all those Theros cards, play the gods, and, and as much of the like enchantment creatures as you want. And then you can go ahead and, and put this on one of those creatures with Evasion and just get in there. I think that's where it's really going to shine more than anywhere but it's kind of a cool design i do like to see things like this that have the potential to be powerful even if it's in a multiplayer or a more casual environment okay having said that that is the end of the first official week of magic origin spoilers but we got a whole other week to go so next week we'll be providing the same sort of coverage getting the spoilers out to you as quickly as possible if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet definitely a good time to do so if any spoilers come up this weekend we'll have videos to cover those as well i have a feeling some may come out late tonight or overnight and we'll get that information out to you if they do and once we get the full set spoiled which I'm assuming will happen either Thursday or Friday of next week. We'll go ahead and begin our full set review, starting with white, the first day of the entire set spoiled. So as always, thanks for watching, and have a great day.
Hey, thanks as always for watching. If you're still looking for quality Magic the Gathering videos, click on one of these annotations. And if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the breaking MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, crazy product openings, or gameplay videos on Heroes and Legends MTG. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.